Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're having some more F1 2020 gameplay around Britain this time and we're going to finally find out whether or not the Mercedes has DAS or not. There were so many questions in previous videos as to why we couldn't use the Mercedes car and I ha honestly had no clue as to why. My theory was that Code Masters were going to show uh, showcase it at uh, Hanoi or another track like that um, and they didn't want any other YouTubers to do that but I guess not because they haven't used the Mercedes yet as far I'm, as, as far as I'm aware and uh, yeah we finally get access to Mercedes all the new cars like, all the cars have been pretty much updated uh, to their current liveries and also a lot of them have their um, actual car models on now so all the aerodynamic elements that are on the cars in real life they now have uh, their their proper bits and pieces on it. As you can see, the Alpha Tower is updated as well. Um, I think there's only a couple of cars that don't have all the you know main parts on the like updated, and I think that one of them is the Haas, and that it should be updated obviously before the game comes out. There's Scott. Scott's confirmed. He's he's engineer for Renault and um, Alfa Romeo. So that that's a bit suspect, Scott. I don't know what's going on there, but uh. Anyways, jumping into, it looks like we've got some new graphics, you got the flag in the background. One thing I'm not exactly a fan of is the the, the way they um, pose for these uh, camera shots, like uh, the the character, the driver models. Uh, there's a couple that are okay, like, you know, arms crossed and that sort of thing, um, or arms on hips, that looks okay, but uh, when they've got the, the arms around their waist kind of area, like, uh, it doesn't look... Um, it doesn't look that great in my opinion at least um but anyways that's just my opinion uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments but uh, we're gonna jump into this race uh we had a couple of new cutscenes there and uh one thing i did notice as a new meta uh we're running with absolutely no tire pressure because if you run with any tire pressure really in the race it absolutely destroys your tire temperatures five lights and the first thing you're going to notice is that giant overpass that's being constructed which is a new addition to the british circuit we've made up already two positions going up the inside into turn one now uh, going to be a little bit conservative, not going to try and run into the back of Magnussen at this point in the race already. We've got 13 laps to try and make it as far up the field as possible, starting from last place here. And uh, obviously we've already got, got past the, the two uh, Williams at this point. Uh, having a look around the outside, nothing really going on there. And uh, we're just going to stay in uh, P17 for the meantime. Uh, we're now activating uh, the, the overtake button, which is super, super important on the first lap of the race. Uh, making sure you're making up as many positions as possible and uh, it seems that the best way to use the overtake button so far from what I've gathered is to use it coming out of corners or absolutely or like the one time when you're trying to make an overtake as a you know an actual attempt. Up at a P15 now another thing I just want to bring up again with the tire temperatures is that when I was running with uh, higher tire pressure uh, the tire temperatures went through the roof like on lap 2 I'll show you at the end of this race as well um, so you guys can believe me um, so if you want to do well in races I think it's going to be a totally new factor for league racing and it appears being on the straight that Mercedes does not in fact have DAS so it's not that big of a deal but I just thought I'd let you guys know that not sure if any of the other YouTubers have discovered this yet but just by decreasing the tire pressures it increased my performance so much especially like during the races as well so uh, if you want to you know I, I think I was struggling on I think 90% difficulty with uh, high tire pressures and I couldn't I was started going backwards I was driving uh, as Lewis Hamilton I started going backwards and uh, I couldn't overtake like for example I couldn't overtake Max Verstappen who was on uh, hard tires while I was on soft tires and yeah so running lower tire pressures seemed to be the way to go up into P13 now we kind of like bullied our way through there on Raikkonen and another thing I want to mention that's uh, also a bit of a change since the previous game is that you can, when when you're incrementing the brake bias from left to right, I mean the front to the back, sorry my bad, um, it goes up by 1% now, it doesn't go up by 2%, so you can be more precise when you're going, and it, oh man, there, there goes science, um, and Giovinazzi, um, not sure what happened there, I think um, he had an engine failure, I think. Yeah, that's another thing. With the AI, they seem to make a lot of mistakes, especially when you're kind of putting pressure on them. If you're right behind them, you'll notice that in my Hanoi Vietnam race. Um, if you want to go check that out, that that'll be coming out. Um, if it's not already out, it'll be coming out very shortly. I think I might release these all at a very similar time. 
But yeah, catching up to the back of Stroll and Ocon now. It seems that like there's quite of a mix um, in the midfield. Nothing really stands out to me as being the best midfield car at the moment. I think the McLarens are pretty well up there. Um, obviously, one of them DNF'd in this race, but Albon seems to be lagging a little bit behind uh, the the top uh, the top five cars, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if he's going to be that far back in every race, but um, yeah. Interesting to see that Albon's that maybe he has a car problem. I'm not sure in this race, but uh, yeah, you got a bunch of new um, colors and sponsors on the the boards. Seems a little bit more vibrant this game in compared to in comparison to F1 2019. As Ocon's actually trying to make the move here on Albon, I'm gonna try and join in the fight here, see if I can capitalize on uh, any mistakes. There was a bit of a lock up there. I'm not sure if they came from Albon or Ocon. Uh, but we're going to try and capitalize on Ocon. I kind of like lost my steering angle and uh, went a little bit wide there. Wouldn't be one of my videos without a bit of track extending now. Um, but now we're caught up to the back of Albon. We don't have um, the pressure of Ocon in this situation, at least this time. And uh, yeah, I want to say that the curbing, you know, obviously it's a, it's a lot less savage than it was in F1 2019. But the curbing is pretty smooth. Like this, this corner here, Cops, I think it's called. Uh, you don't even have to think about it with low fuel or close to no fuel um, You don't really even have to think about it and Alvin's actually fine in this position as we go through maggots and Beckett's and uh, That's a that's a great little bit of ding-dong racing there. So the AI, you know, they seem pretty strong at the moment um, I will admit though they they did bully me a little bit But uh, you know, it's good to see that they're p willing to put up a fight against uh, the player and uh, yeah, so with the Maggots and Beckett's complex, it's absolutely all flat out until you get to the final right-hander and then the left-hander that goes onto the hangar straight, obviously. Uh, all of it is flat out. You don't need to downshift even. You can just take it absolutely flat out on low, lower fuel. Probably not with higher fuel load, but um, now we've caught up to the back of Ricardo. There was a bit of a gap there, but we've managed to hunt it down a bit. Lap 7 now, we're halfway through the race, and you're about to see something really cool. Look at that, we've got some new uh, pit window graphics, uh, you know, as powered by AWS um, kind of thing that you see on TV, so that's that's so cool. I think that's a really nice touch um, that they've included that. you got also five uh, cars in the top left corner that you can see relevant to your position rather than just having the three. So you can tell what's going on more around you in comparison to the other drivers. So that's a neat little addition that they've added to the game. We've got this new little uh, pit lane, uh, you know, timer graphic as well. I think that's a it's adjusted from the previous game. Uh, the pit the pit crew looks pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if they've been touched up too much, but uh, the graphics seem to be a little bit better. I think, in my opinion, and uh, it's all it's all coming together for this game. I think it's it's quite um, quite enjoyable. So currently for this race we're running at 106 uh, AI, uh, not quite 110%. I can go. I discovered it after this race. I can I can go toe to toe with 110 AI, but I'd say only if I full on practice, had a good setup, and uh, you know I properly sweated out with the AI. But at that point, you know you got to put in a fair bit of time to get to that level um, at each track. Made the move on Verstappen. I had a race at Australia um, with 110% AI and I was keeping up just fine um, without any practice and I had an okay setup on but I couldn't really make progress. That's the that's the difference there. So I could hold my position, um, didn't have to defend super hard but uh, it was a little bit tricky to make any progress um, once I was already near the, you know, the top six cars. So. Uh, it is possible, you know, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 110% AI with the controller. Uh, but you do need to practice a fair bit, I think, for it. With the overtake button, it is so easy to burn out or just forget about um, it being activated. So make sure that you only use it when you want to. Uh, if you burn it all out, then you won't have any ERS to deploy passively as the game also deploys it on kind of a low setting in comparison. Uh, you'll have no juice, basically to get deployed automatically and you'll be a sitting duck because you have nothing to defend yourself with. But overall, it's an improvement. You don't have to, you know, constantly switch up and down ERS mode anymore. It's a lot less management. You can focus on the driving instead of worrying about all that sort of stuff now to gain a slight advantage. 
um, as important as it was on F1 2019. I don't think many F1 uh, like top you know esports drivers or league racers really enjoyed it. I think you know when you take away that sort of you know part of the racing, it becomes more enjoyable as people just focus more on the part that you know you buy the game for. You buy the game for the for the driving, not for the ERS management. And uh, as you saw earlier, I managed to take uh, Maggot Spec, it's all flat out until the final right hand up. And that's just a perfect example of um, how much speed these cars now have at uh, high speed corners and the amount of downforce they have. Uh, like, I'm only running, I think it was 3.6 or 3.7 wings, you know, 3 at the front. And I was taking Cops and Maggots and Beckets flat. So, that's, that's only worth 3 on the front wing. So... That's just that's just crazy. If you're running um, higher downforce, you'd be able to even uh, like throw it in there without even thinking about it. At this stage, like because it's so early on, I'm really curious to see how the other YouTubers do when they you know start up a race. Because if they run with the default setup, they're gonna have tire pressures that are somewhere in the medi like the middle or medium tire pressures, and that'll still make you slower um, than what you'd be with running close to no tire pressure at all because of the tire temperatures. I'm not saying what's realistic or not. I don't care what eye racing, uh, like, is you know meant to be like. But this this is what's quick on the F1 2020 game. I'm letting you know now. So that there you go. If you want to be quick in races, it seems like lower tire pressures is the way to go because you'll see at the end of this video what happens when you run with just higher tire pressures, not even you know maximum tire pressures. Uh, yeah, it's quite extraordinary. So yeah, we've almost caught up to the back of Vettel and Leclerc after they've had a bit of a squabble here. And we're going to come home in fourth position, coming from the back of the grid for a 25% raise. Not a bad effort. Um, obviously, still very new to the game, um, but I'm happy with that sort of effort. There's now a driver of the day graphic. Uh, surprise. That's a, quite, that's a pretty cool addition to the game as well. Here we are then, a fantastic British Grand Prix. And what a performance it was from our race winners today. And talk to me, what do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. I pretty much got the stock uh, podium celebration for this one, but I went back and I found a new one, so I'll also show that, so stay tuned for that one after all this stuff, but I wanted to let the, the gameplay play through to, so, to show you what it looks like. The The graphics look uh, a bit different, they've got the proper fonts I think now that they've added to the, you know, the end screen for the results now, so that looks quite nice. Um, other than that, you know, not a whole lot different, you got view highlights I guess, uh, I think that might have made a return from the previous game, not exactly sure. But yeah, that's going to conclude that race. Another little cool addition I wanted to bring up before um, this video finish as well is that when you race in the wet and you have podium celebrations and all that cutscenes, they now wear like wet weather clothes. They wear jackets. So you'll see a fair few of the people in the pits actually wear jackets. And I thought that was like, even though it's a small addition, I thought that was pretty cool that they added that to the game. See, they're wearing um, those black jackets. Um, at Mercedes and that happens with every team I'm pretty sure so that, that new little addition there and yeah this is uh, what happened when I finished the race in first obviously there was a different podium celebration this time uh, Vettel's like <laughs> pouring the the champagne onto Hamilton and then Hamilton um, sprays the person that represents the constructor on the podium as well <laughs> so yeah this is what happened when I ran with these tire pressures as you can see they're not really over the top but we'll find out what happens after lap two. This is what happened with the tire pressures. I just thought I'd let you guys know. Uh, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, you know that F1 teams try to run as low a tire pressures as they can. Uh, and tire pressures and tire temperatures matter such a big deal to these guys in um, the real life sport as well. So that's now transferred into uh, the game itself. Uh, and as you see, I'm going backwards. This is 90% difficulty. It's not even 106 that I was running earlier on. And I'm going backwards. So yeah, just thought I'd let you guys know. Thought that was a pretty cool or different addition to the game at least. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more F1 2020 gameplay. Uh, there should be a bunch more on the channel right now.
and more to come in the very near future. Hey guys, thanks for watching and subscribing. I'll see you all on a brand new one.